Hello my friends, what's up? And welcome back to my channel. Welcome to today's video. I know I'm a little bit late and some of y'all never mind that, but in YouTube time, I am late, you guys. So we're gonna talk today about the Pat McGrath Utopian palette. At this point, you probably already decided if you want it or not, if you're going to get it or not, but perhaps you're just interested in seeing how it worked for me. So if you're interested in seeing how I got this look, swatches on my skin tone, a deeper skin tone, thoughts, all of that good stuff, everything you are used to, then just keep on watching. Alrighty, my friends. So I picked my palette up via the Pat McGrath website because I typically find that when she does a new release and you sign up for the early access, you get a 10% off coupon code. In addition, if you are going to bundle something, which she'll sell like a bundle of her newest collection, then it is cheaper. So I did pick up the palette and the wand, which I forgot to use in today's video, you guys. I'm so used to reaching for my Fenty Pro Filter eye primer, but this will come in a future video. But I picked up the two because it was $132 for both instead of $125 and $32 plus the 10% discount. So I figured it was just the right way to go. So here is what the box looks like. You've already seen this. This is nothing new and I'm kind of just reiterating because you've already heard this too that we were all expecting something else when we first saw this teaser with the different colors on the box and it ended up being a little bit different than we thought but the box is absolutely beautiful i love her artwork i think it's pretty I don't know, there's something about it that just always super draws me in. So for reference, um, as per usual, this is made in Italy, which I believe pretty much all of her palettes are. And then it does have an 18 month shelf life. Her quads may be made in the USA, I can't remember but I do appreciate the anything over 12 month shelf life. I appreciate, I especially appreciate 24 months. I keep my palettes for a really long time, you guys. So the palette looks the same as all her others. It is the black lacquer packaging. And then if it looks kind of wrinkly, it's because now she's putting a plastic film over this that you can just peel off. I'm gonna leave mine on for the time being add a little bit of protection, that kind of thing. But I have never received a palette that has had that kind of covering. So um, you're already familiar again with these palettes, but it does have the gold back. And then this is what this bad boy looks like right here. I'm going to get you some swatches. Again, I don't want to spend too much time on showing you the inside of the palette because you've already seen it so many times over, but I do want to present you with swatches on my skin tone and a deeper skin tone, which if you are new, it is my husband's, um, arm that we are going to swatch on. So just so that you have an idea of how how the shades might work for you. So let me grab some of these swatches. I'm going to start us off with the first row, just so that you can see how they swatch real time there. Nothing short of absolutely stunning, quite frankly, but it is Pat McGrath. And I live for these types of shades. You guys already know this. And if you are new, metallics, foils, they are just everything to me. I could forego all the mattes in the world for those types of standout shades. So that is row number one. Let me grab you row number two. So here's row number two. So that is what row number two looks like. Again, very saturated in pigment, very stunning. And then this purple one is for me worth the entire palette just because it's so unique to the brand. But uh, yeah, that's what we've got as far as swatches. I hope that was at least somewhat helpful for you. So at this point, let's go ahead and move into the demo so that we can put this on my eyes together so that you can see what I did. Super simple. I don't do anything complicated, but if you already picked this up, hopefully it inspires you to pull it out of your drawer and do a look with it. Uh, and if not, then hopefully it helps you decide whether it is right for you or not. So let's get into that now. 
starting off with the shade Shockwave. This is that coral matte that you rarely see a bright matte in a Pat McGrath palette. Usually she does the neutrals. So this was a very pleasant surprise. I'm just kind of stamping this using a BH Cosmetics blending brush. I'm stamping this in the crease. And the reason I'm doing that is because I don't want to go in messy. So once I stamp it in, then I'm kind of blending it out just to kind of ease it up a little bit. Um, but the whole reason I wanted to stamp this one in and not be too messy is because I'm going to use a different shade um, on the outer portion of the crease and then the lid as well. So Extreme Plum Noir is what we're going to use on the, I guess, the last fourth of the crease, I guess you could call it. And then that most outer portion of the lid. This is the deepest matte in the palette. There are three mattes and this is the deepest matte. So for depth and dimension, this is the shade that you're going to want to use. And uh, it was okay. I'm not a huge fan of Pat McGrath mattes. The coral in this palette was really great, um, but this was kind of up to par as to what I expect from a Pat McGrath matte. And that's not, they're not my favorite. I just don't really enjoy the work I have to put into them. So next going in with the shade Secret Eden, don't be deceived, this shade is actually quite a bit darker than what you would expect. It looks like kind of a dusty rose in the pan and it is a lot darker than that. So I was gonna kind of use it to peek up over that coral, just a little bit of a, you know, baby pink, really wispy, yeah, not so much. I don't think I'll use it in that capacity again. <laughs> Now going in with my Fenty Pro Filter Eye Primer, once I did this on the other eye, I realized that I had the actual, that intensifies wand that came with this collection. I can't believe I forgot to use it, but next time, next time. Just laying this down because I do go in with a tacky base anytime I'm using one of these types of metallic or foiled shades. And then for today, we are gonna use the shade Cosmic Bloom. As usual, these shade these stunner shades is what I was gonna say are just quite stunning <laughs> they're just very beautiful very metallic very over the top everything you would expect from a Pat McGrath metallic it's in this palette so my finger is always the best way I like to apply I get the opacity and then the intensity very quickly and then using a morphe little stumpy shader brush I'm just going in and placing some product in the area that I couldn't reach with my finger, which is where my lid meets my crease. Next, I'm going in with the shade Astral Amethyst Moon, which again, another shade I was super excited about in this palette because obviously I've never seen a kind of a deeper, more intense purple like this. And this is one of her special formulas, the kinds you get in these larger palettes that's super sparkly. Um, and then just adding a little bit, no extra product, but what was on the brush with that deeper shade, the Extreme Plum Noir, just kind of blending that in. Last step, I'm gonna place some Skin Show Nude Ecstasy with a detailer brush on the inner corner for a little added pop, and I forgot to come back for the final look, but you'll see it here again shortly. Alrighty, my friends, so I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found it easy to follow, easy to work with. And now let's just go into final thoughts for this palette because this is a very hefty price tag and you kind of want to be sure before you make your purchase, unless you're anything like me and you just want to add the palette to your collection. So let's start off with these standout shades. They're nothing short of incredible. They are so fun to work with. They're easy to use. I always go in with a tacky base because that is what brings out the absolute best in these shades. I will tell you this is the first time ever that I have actually layered one of the sparkly shades over just a regular, it was a metallic, but over top of a shadow and didn't put it over a tacky base and I could hands down see the difference. It just really makes it pop when you put one of these over a tacky base. So it's still beautiful. I still love the results, but I can see the difference, but they are nothing short of amazing. Everything you would expect from a Pat McGrath sparkly intense eyeshadow. So the kind that come in these big palettes. The metallics are also beautiful. This particular shade right here has a very, very heavy green shift. It looks almost like just a dark, dark green, like a forest green. And it's 
absolutely lovely. I kind of wish you would have gone a different direction because we've kind of already seen that in the Divine Rose too, but that's okay. I'm not complaining about it. So as far as the mattes go, I am going to give you a very unpopular opinion. And it's something if you are a regular on my channel, you already know that this is going to be my opinion. I'm not a fan of the mattes, I, but in general, I'm not a fan of Pat McGrath mattes. They're just a little bit dry for me. They can be a little bit skippy, a little bit um, just difficult to work with, quite frankly, and these are no exception to that. I would say the best one out of them all is this coral shade. This is the one I found the smoothest, the easiest to work with, the easiest to blend, um, and I do actually like that one, and I like that it's different. I do also find that Pat McGrath does a lot of repetitive matte shades, um, even if they're not exact. They're just all the same color story all the time, and it's usually the browns and the kind of burgundies. So that's that. So I could take or leave the mattes. I do like this one. Leave that one. But these two right here are just okay. And in fact, this one I thought was going to be a very baby, dusty kind of rose, and it's actually a lot deeper than what I thought. So definitely going to use it in a very different way next time. But but these two right here, I could take or leave. Not my favorite, but the Pat McGrath matte formula, again, is just not my favorite to begin with. So for me, when I buy a Pat McGrath palette, I buy it for the metallic shades, for those sparkly shades that you can't find anywhere else. Lastly, this shade right here, the only one I don't own from her big ones is the two which is the green packaging. And so you will have to let me know in the comment section below if this gold, if you own both, is this gold similar to the gold in that number two? Because that was the shade I wanted the most out of that one. And at the time, Sephora couldn't get my order right. I'd order two and they'd send me one. And I think there was a glitch with their system. And then I called and then they sent me a different one. Anyways, long story short, that's the only one I don't have. I'm very curious if this is the same gold as in that one or similar, not the same. So just let me know in the comment section below. That may uh, help alleviate a purchase for me in the future. So that being said, love this palette. Of course, what were you going to expect? It's got the sparkly standout shades that I am here for. Again, I am so sorry that I forgot to use this Intensifies wand. We'll put it to use in the very near future. So, so I hope you found something helpful in this video, whatever that may be, to help you make a decision on whether this palette is right for you. Again, I know it's a hefty price tag, but I think we've it's all relative and you get conditioned because this is an insanely expensive palette, but I think you end up buying them so much as far as like every time she comes out with them that it's almost like conditioned you to say, okay, it's not that bad but it, it, it is, it's very, very expensive. So you wanna make an educated decision on whether it's right for you and hopefully this helped in some way, shape or form. Hey, my friends, well, that brings us to the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it somewhat beneficial. So before I let you go, I just wanna give you a very quick verse of the day to encourage you and motivate you and to let you know that Jesus loves you. Today's comes from Ephesians 6, 10 and 11, and this is more directed to my fellow believers. And it says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power, put on the full armor of God. In this crazy, crazy world, you have to do that. Before you leave your house every single day, put on the full armor of God. And it is my prayer that if you don't already know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that he would make himself very real to you in this moment, that you would feel an overwhelming peace and love that you haven't felt before, that you would absolutely know that no other human could provide that kind of peace and love, and that you would come to know him as the perfect and most wonderful gentleman that he is. All right, guys, I love each and every one of you, but Jesus loves you so much more. I will see you in the next one. Take care, friends. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.